It started with the declaration of Essendon's edge, and that was well heard across the border. It materialised in an ill-spirited affair at the SCG, full of flashpoint and accusation. And in modern footy, it's a rare postscript to a game. We've been very explicit that we want an Essendon edge. And I think all Essendon people, people who have followed our club for a long period of time, know what an Essendon edge looks like. the S and an edge though. This is what Brad Scott wanted. He wanted blokes standing up for each other. Yeah, they're trying to get after us. Like, it's all off the ball. We're just worried about the ball. Oh, right cup crashing through. And Harry Cunningham is in a bad way behind play. Yeah, they clearly come out with an intent uh, in, the, in the physical space. It was a, a bit of feisty action early, and um, we knew they were going to bring it. They actually mentioned it midweek about the Essendon way, so um, we knew it was going to be tough, and, and we had to match it and embrace it and not go over the top and do what they did, which was a bit unfair at times. Bit unfair at times. They really gave it to us. Uh, Essendon, they obviously come out. Brad Scott come out and said they want to have that Essendon edge, and I'm obviously Peter Wright they took it a bit too far, but uh, that's really a good one from it. And they, we, they'll still get into us, get into us. Let go. There's a bit of anger out there at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Streaming in. This is old school. They're coming from all the way in defence, and it's an Let old go. fashioned melee. How long are they going to go for? That was what we we put up and um, they're physical and they, they had a crack and um, yeah we obviously ran out of time which is nice. Sydney Swans start 2024 with three huge wins. Yeah, we could either make it into an athletics contest or we could compete in a contest and get the ball going our way and that yeah, was a really good arm wrestle for a big part of that, that game. They talked about it during the week, they were very clear about the, the edge that they wanted to play with so we knew that you know, they'd be coming with that. We'll continue to, to find the line and what the Essendon edge looks like. Let's see how it plays out during the week. There's not much love there at the moment. We all love being tough, but you got to do it four quarters. Bloody perfect. Two playing groups who do not get along. It heightened the whole atmosphere and experience from the couch, that's for sure. Yeah, it did. I, I, I really liked listening to uh, Brad Scott, and I really liked listening to John Longmire. Every dog... He wanted to say every dog has its day. That's what he wanted to say, but John was just calm enough and... Brad was wanting to say, well, this is how they're going to play. And that's fine. You can have an S and an edge. You can have an S and an edge. But part of being a, having an edge in footy is you can be aggressive. You can go up the man. But you've got to be aggressively defending the game. That's part of being an edgy team. Can you defend? Can you defend hard? Because that sort of stuff, that, that's great. It was great theatre. We'll get on to Peter Wright in a second. You know, Draper. Draper, I'm mentioning old players here tonight, Jared, but Draper reminded me of Roger Merritt, which was a planned, uncoordinated late attack and, oh, I'll hit you, but I'll fall on the ground as if I didn't mean it because I'm uncoordinated. <laughs> he, she got fined for that and so he should have. You can't be doing that in the game today, but, you know, Essendon, they went after him and they stayed with them, but you still need talent, you still need to defend and they weren't good enough. So they actually got some, they've got other games, they've got other areas of their game to work on. You have to grow into these things. Does that edge of aggression suit this Essendon side? No, no. And you know that. You've called this in games for the last 20 years. I, I think Brad... Is it what they needed to implement over time? It'll yeah, be more time. refined as they go along. Well, they've got to recruit players with that edge. It's, all right. it's, 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 it's like asking... I'm going to use your example. It's like, I'll use your example. I need you to go out there and be tough. It's not in your makeup to be tough. No, I'll do it. Well, can you do it for 20 games? Or I'll do it tonight. So it's got to be in, in your makeup. It's funny, you know, you know what Essendon needs? <laughs> Ironically, Essendon needs Brad and Chris Scott on the halfback flanks. That's what they need. They need Dean Solomon and Damien Hardwick and, and Dean Wallace. That's what they need. They haven't got it. OK, so when they put this aggressive nature in, that's fine. But it's got to be consistent. You're right. You've got to grow into that. You've got to have a mindset all the time, not just flash in the pan. Brad says, oh, we don't want sugar hits. That was an aggressive sugar hit. Are we going to have more of the aggression going through? We'll see. What did you make of Tom Papley? <laughs> is, there oh, a, I don't... is there a little bit of pot kettle? Oh, yeah, a little bit. Who cares? Who, I didn't care one little bit. Papley's a mouth. It's great. We need more Papleys in our game. Now, he's one of those guys, if you're on the opposition, you'd like to slap him across the face. But that's OK. I think he was fantastic. He had every right to say 
the build-up was there. Yeah, it was. And he just, they just answered the build-up, Sydney. Yep. So, well done. To it was Tom so Patrick. interesting that it was declared and then it sort of played out as they they sounded the alarm across the border and Sydney were waiting for them. So, th this could have had a really nasty ending. There, there's this incident late in the piece with Nick Hind uh, and it, if it just lets your mind wander. So, he comes through with a flying elbow, right? It... Now, if that oh, lands, that's... tonight's conversation is so much different. Yeah, but that's fake tough as well, Jared. It's fake. He didn't want to do it. He, 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 look, he, he, if he wanted to do it, he would have. <laughs> so what he wanted to do is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scare you, right? He had every opportunity to hit him. Look, he didn't even raise it. I mean, come on. So you think he's had deliberately had an air swing there? Yeah, I think okay. so. You know why? Because if he deliberately went to go after his jaw like that, We'd be sitting here right now saying, who do you think you yeah, are? Yeah. Like we're saying about, I said last week, about James Sisley kicking. Who do you think you yeah, are? Not much has to go wrong for that to land. He kept it, I think he kept it low. That's a good footage though. Yeah. I don't think, my personal view, I don't think Peter Wright belonged in the Essendon Edge conversation. But it, because it happened so early in the game, with this as the backdrop, it did. I don't think Wright's that player at all. That's a fair comment. Um, so this is a player who arrives... He didn't arrive late at the marking contest. He arrived simultaneously and his mm. mistake was not to contest the ball Absolutely. once he got there. And he's going to pay a price for that tomorrow yep. night as the AFL's starting point would be four weeks and we'll wait to hear if they tip their hand higher than that. I think every player playing AFL footy, every player playing any level of football can expect, if you're backing back into a space which requires tremendous courage... It is imperative that the person coming front onto the ball shows the same level of commitment to the ball. Right? He had three choices, which I wrote about this morning, so I, don't, I won't go into great detail. He could have slowed down and thought, I'm going to be late for this. He could have spoiled and opened himself up and gone for the ball. Or tucked the arm and crashed into, him, into his head, and he took that option. And it was a really, really bad option, Jared. Yeah. Even in the new life that we live, that was still a bad hit 20 years ago. That's the kind of hit that starts fights because it was late. You took a cheap shot. Now, OK, it was late, but you've got to be better than that. We, you players ask each other to be better than that. The league asks you to be better than that. So I haven't got a lot of sympathy for Peter. He's not a dirty player, but that was just a bad decision for yeah, him. So behalf. I'm actually interested to ask our two coaches tonight, what's the coaching technique in this? So I was watching earlier in the afternoon when Marby Ochoa arrived at the May collision yep. and, and I'm struck by how similar these two are. One player coming back, one player going up. Chole raises his knee to contest the ball and he leaves the player with three broken ribs and damage to a vertebra. He is bound, duty bound, to contest the ball in that moment. Yes, and the raising of the He's knee is one jump. of those yep. ways to do that. Mm -hmm. And then Peter Wright's arrival is he doesn't, he doesn't do anything to contest the ball mm -hmm. as he arrives. No, mate. I know Western fans are whinging, saying, oh, we, we just got to... You've got to be realist now, mate. We can't have an AFL game of football... Oh, we can't have a game of AFL football where a player comes off Cunningham and says, I, I, I can't remember. I, I've got memory loss. What? I know it's a tough game, but we're, the players have got to... The, the, everyone's got to be looked after. And that was just, I'll say it again, it was a bad decision. What do you think he'll get? Uh, I think he'll get four. I think that's what the AFL will ask for and I think that's where it will What land. do you think? What's the atmosphere out there? You, you talk uh, to more people than me. Yeah, I think there's a bit of sympathy. I think there's more sympathy for Wright than we have seen in either of the two previous cases this year, knowing we've started with a clean slate. Power Pepper four and mm. Jimmy Webster seven. Um, and that's, I am, I'm interested to ask our two coaches um, what their view and what the coaching technique is. Max King is bound for the tribunal as well. Is St Kilda, I would imagine, are going to try to get this downgraded from medium impact to low. I can't imagine how they would be successful on this front. Is That can go wrong in so many ways, tucking in and hitting a player high. And this has clearly been graded as medium because uh, it's lifted one category for the potential injury that it might have caused. Mm -hmm. But they'll take their chance with their spearhead. But again, if that if that goes a, a whisker wrong from there, is we're in we're in three, four, five week territory. All they do is have to free fra freeze frame that shot on that moment, and there's the end of the case. We're not yeah. the hanging judges tonight, but you got rid of the ball, 
and he got cannoned into. If you got the body, it's down down the field. Get him in the head. It's a report. Yeah, yeah. It's as simple as that.